I'm Lara Skye and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the basics of chastity. I always get asked questions about what is chastity, how do I size a cage, how long should I wear it, things like that and although I am not an expert by any means I have participated with chastity subs for years, I personally enjoy it and I think I can help you guys out a little bit. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to talk a little bit about cages and then I put a tweet out last week asking some people for advice so I'll go back and add that in and if there's anything that I've forgotten you might get a jump scare from me in my pyjamas while I'm editing this but <laughs> I've tried to film this so many times and I think it's best just to go for it. <laughs> so for the purposes of this video we'll be talking about chastity in the form of Wearing a cage, you also get mental chastity, which is more about changing your lifestyle, not to touch yourself. Today, we are only talking about being caged. So as you can see, this one is quite small. Don't let that put you off just yet. I'll get into that in a minute. So who wears chastity? I have a lot of people saying, well, I'm not submissive. I don't want to wear a cage or I'm submissive and I don't have a key holder or I don't know if I want to wear it forever, can I take it off? So basically anyone with a penis can wear a cage. There are some people who just find cages impossible to wear, whether it's just their anatomy or for health reasons or maybe they're allergic to the metal so they have to wear a plastic cage, things like that. But generally everyone with a penis can wear a cage. So generally the subs that I work with are submissive men who want to kind of work on their devotion, to change their mindset a little bit and they use this as a way of challenging themselves and really pushing themselves further into service and servitude. You also get men who are not submissive, who just wear it, you know, as a piece of jewellery because they like the feeling. Um, you also get some men who like to kind of subvert expectations and they're alphas and they wear a cage because it's like showing their self-control, their control over their bodies. You also get another group of people who will be trans women who wear them. They quite often find it helps dysphoria. So if that's something that helps you, obviously great. Um, sissies as well and subs who are doing feminization often wear cages kind of for the same reason and they find it makes them more submissive and it helps them fit better into the role. So there's lots of different ways that you can look at chastity, whether it is to create a bigger power imbalance, whether it's to give your partner control over your sex life, whether it's to deny yourself, let yourself focus, many reasons that people wear chastity. But Next, I think we should probably talk about how do you start wearing chastity. And for this, obviously, you're going to have to buy yourself a cage. Your cage, you can choose what kind of material you want it to be. I only recommend silicone cages if you're going to be wearing it for a very short amount of time. Maybe like an hour or two just for the feeling to an event or with your partner for play sessions. I don't think they're very good long term because they're too soft and too lightweight. But for plastic and metal, fully your preference. This one here is the Vice from Locked and Lost. You get it in different sizes. So you would just choose which size fitted you based on the measurements. This one has a kind of clip mechanism which goes back. I do have a review of this. And then the other cage that I have at my dungeon today is this one, which is for me is more of a show cage. We actually got this for a photo shoot one time. So I personally wouldn't have a sub wear this all the time. It is very big and there are very few subs who will actually fill this properly. So if we even look at the biggest from Locked and Lost, this cage here is a standard, the clear one. 
So you can see that the metal one is quite a bit bigger. So it's probably a large or an extra large. And I personally don't have subs that fit this. So yeah, first things first, get your cage. Start wearing it, start breaking it in. Go slowly at first, I would say like 30 minutes to a couple hours. Take it off, break it in slowly, you know, gradually extend your time. Please do not wear it for a month straight the first time you get it. It will hurt. It will not be pleasant. You will hate your life. Just be sensible, okay? So if you've never bought a cage before and you're looking to buy your first one, you might have to go through a few cages before you find one that's your exact fit that you feel very, very comfortable in and feels really right for you. But you want to be measuring yourself when you're flaccid and you want to be very honest with the measurements on the site. Just go by them. I can't tell you what size you are just by telling you. You know, you have to take a measuring tape and just follow the instructions, please. Because the biggest issue people have is that they buy too small or too big and if you buy too big it will be uncomfortable. You may not think this, you may think oh, I'll buy something with some space in it, it will be more comfortable. It will not. Just trust me, it will not. I can't really go into too much detail on here about why it won't be comfortable but I'm sure that you can look up some <laughs> something online that will explain it. We were at the point of, you have your cage, we are being caged for the first time, we're kind of breaking it in. So are you going to have a key holder, are you not? That's quite a big decision. Obviously your partner might want to be involved, they might not. So it's something you have to discuss with them. Do you have a friend take the key, whether it's in a dominant way, whether it's just to say, here's a key, can you look after it? Might need it back soon just for safekeeping. You don't necessarily have to tell them it's for a cage, you can just say, look after that. Do you have a friend who's involved in the kink scene? Do you go to a dominatrix? Do you do things virtually? So your next steps will really depend on how you want to be caged. Do you want to have someone who's given you the motivation? Do you feel that you can keep yourself caged? Because a lot of people, what they struggle with is breaking the initial habits. So when you're wearing the cage, Although you physically have something on your body, your mindset has to be right as well, otherwise you just won't really succeed. Because chastity is about changing your habits. If you normally touch yourself for say like 30 minutes a day, I don't know, maybe two hours a day, maybe you do it for three hours a day, four hours a day, you then have a lot of spare time. So with that free time, you really identify, you know, new hobbies, why are you doing these things? And it just gives you more time and freedom to focus on yourself rather than chasing orgasms and all of that you're able to be caged now some people will go into chastity and i would say this is the wrong mindset that if you are going to be wearing a cage simply not to touch yourself and still trying to achieve orgasm i would say rethink your decisions or ask yourself why because obviously, yes, it can be done, but that shouldn't be your goal. I don't really see the point in that. I can understand it from a session point of view, putting a cage on for an hour, doing that, taking it back off. But if you want to get into long-term chastity, that is really not what it's about. <laughs> we are just using chastity as a way to reprogram your brain, to change the way that you look at life, um, to take away sort of instant gratification and make you focus on more long-term sort of self journey and whatever. So that is one thing, first telling off. Your Cajun journey though. So if you have someone who is caging you, you might find that quite useful, especially when you start to do longer times and you start to have a few days in you'll normally start leaking a little bit and you'll sort of face that first hurdle of you know should I be doing this, should I stop, should I keep going. So once you get past that initial hurdle you tend to be 
just kind of part of your everyday life. Trust that you will just start to become part of your body, you'll get very used to it and then maybe I would say about three weeks in it normally gets harder again. So a lot of people break around the two and a half to like three and a half week mark especially if they're doing long-term caging and this is whether or not you're taking off for hygiene reasons or if you're keeping it on 24 7. A lot of people hit another mental hurdle around then and it is really just about pushing through that's all I can say is if you want to do long-term chastity you just have to push through you just have to be like this is the way life just every day you know it's just how it is and one of the problems as well I'll touch briefly on this before we go into someone else but if you do end up breaking your chastity and well not physically breaking the cage although people do do this is one of the most important things is if you do end up touching yourself is that you just be honest with yourself honest with your partner honest with your dom don't go into a shame cycle just kind of accept it's happened go on just put the cage back on it's fine that's all you need to think is it's not i don't really like to see it as messing up because although it's disappointing, I guess, for both of us, it is something that just proves that you're moving on. So I think it's a lot better if you can just kind of step forward from that. You could say, okay, I've done this, have a think about it, why did I do that? And go back into it. Because the worst thing you can do, you will feel awful if you just throw away your cage, if you've ripped it off without permission, thrown it in the bin, run away for a month, not spoken to your partner for a week and you will feel horrible. <laughs> the way to not feel horrible is to communicate as much as you may hate it. And also on that note, if you do want to be uncaged, I always find the best thing to do is to ask the person caging you if you're not holding your own key because they'll either give you the motivation to stay caged. I personally would say, you know, wait like, an hour or two or if you still want uncaged tomorrow then we can uncage you obviously if it's an emergency we just uncage you but if it's just you not want to be caged anymore I would try and push you that extra little bit and make you want to stay in your cage. I quite often get asked about leaking yes you will leak normally that stops but for some people it doesn't um, it is just something that your body will do when you're in chastity. Shrinkage is another one are you going to shrink permanently when you wear it? Um, not permanently, but you will shrink the longer that you wear a cage. You'll normally downsize at least a little bit, possibly up to like two or three cage sizes, depending how far you want to go, how long you wear it, stuff like that. You don't have to be locked for life. A lot of people are worried about that. Um, what else? Will people notice it through your clothes? No. And I mean, if people are staring at your crotch, I'd be very worried about why they're staring there rather than the fact that you have a cage on. For going through airport security, I have had subs with cages on before. The only thing I would say is that you really need to tell security that you're wearing one and then it's fine. To be honest, I would probably take it off if I was traveling just for my own ease of, you know, life. I would not want to be held up unnecessarily because I've got a cage on. If it's not an option, then obviously just tell the airport staff and they will be very friendly to you, hopefully. Hygiene, you can clean with your cage on, but ideally you would take it off. If not, then you would want to be using like syringes or a sort of squirty bottle of some kind to make sure that you're really getting to the cage making sure that you are properly cleaning yourself because chastity is not an excuse to be disgusting. So now I've had my little bit of a brain dump of everything that I could think of just talking to the camera. I'm going to go into some comments that were left on my tweet and then we'll expand on them. So Robert was saying when to stop chastity if it's painful or uncomfortable, which pretty much just says it's so Something being a little bit uncomfortable to start with is normal in the way that it feels heavy or it feels tight. If it is painful, 
if it burns, if you're getting cuts or blisters or anything like that, obviously take the cage off. You might find to start with that if you're wearing it for too long, you're getting discomfort. So that's obviously something you would just take it off, leave it until all discomfort's gone, put it back on, wear it for less time, that sort of thing. You might need a different cage size or a different style. One thing to be very wary of in terms of hurting yourself is the vise, how it opens at the back, has that hinge. Do not catch yourself in it, it will hurt any cage which is like that. The ones that you just pull on, I have a love-hate thing with them, so they're probably the ones that most people prefer, but I don't feel like you can get as accurate a size because you have to pull them on. So it's very much personal preference at that point. Okay, so Sharky was saying about bonding with your partner and using it as a way of teasing denial which is actually a really good point. So if your partner is holding your keys, it really gives them control over your body. So it's sort of a power exchange, as well as them being able to kind of unlock you for use when they decide or deny you when they decide. And it means that they can then try other ways to tease you, to turn you on, to get you interested in them. And you can explore other parts of your sexuality that aren't just having sex. So that's always a good point. Okay, so Subby on Twitter has said about how tighter can sometimes be better, which I've kind of covered, where if you're getting hard in your cage, it can be quite painful. I mean, I've even seen people that have a cage so big that they have space in it when they're hard. That, just do not do that. You will disappoint me. It will not be worth it. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're saying the sock method of putting it on. I don't personally know this, I will have to research it and add it in here. Sock method is when you either use a sock or a nylon stocking and you put the base ring on first and then you put the stocking over your penis and pull the fabric through the hole in the chastity cage first and that helps you guide yourself into the cage without having to force yourself in and I've included a link in the description for more information. Tommy was asking, looking for buying a cage, the quality size, fitting tips, 24-7 wear, early in travel, existing relationships. So I've covered some of this already. If you want to introduce it to an existing relationship, it's obviously about communication, talking to your partner, making sure that you know that they're happy with it because quite often your partner maybe won't mind that you're exploring chastity but they might not want to hold a key so I think having a good grasp on why you personally want to be caged first and then say to your partner would you be happy to involve this in a relationship or could I maybe wear this for a few hours and you unlock me or could you tease me with the cage on things like that but be warned that not everyone will be comfortable with that and that's obviously fine um when you're buying a quality cage, you can obviously get a lot of cages on Amazon. A lot of them are copies of other ones. So your kind of main cages, you've got Vice from Locked and Lost, you've got the Holy Trainer, you've got Kinked Cobra, and then you have the Cherry Keeper. The Cherry Keeper also has a permanent lock that you can buy and put in it. Um, I think you have to drill it out, which is kind of cool. Sissy Kylie has asked about chastity straps to get them to sit into your body. So a chastity strap is just kind of what it sounds like. It goes through the o-ring that sits against your body and it just holds it tighter. So they do help if you have a cage that's kind of fallen off a little bit, you want it to fit tighter, they are very good. Some people use things like shoelaces or just bits of elastic tied around. I personally don't find them to be very, I mean, they work. They're not very visually appealing. So I would definitely invest in one of these chastity straps if it's something you're fine about. Ryan has said about the only way to be an escapable as a PA, which if you know what that is, you know what that is. If not, I cannot tell you. <laughs> I don't think I can tell you. Ben was asking how you stop it from falling off. So 
you're going to have to look at the size of ring behind. So you look at the size of ring that you're wearing at the base and also the size of the cage. If you have something like the vice, so for example this vice, it has different sizes of spacers that go in the middle. So you would look at that, you might need a bigger or a smaller ring just depending on your anatomy and then you might need a larger or smaller space between it. But it is very dependent on the cage so it's not something that I can really answer um, without seeing your cage in person. Kelly has said about keeping it dry to avoid chafing. Um, yeah, that's one thing. So obviously making sure that you're properly drying yourself after showers, that you're just making sure that you're dry throughout the day, that sort of thing, however you choose to do that. So subservant <laughs> is talking about pleasuring yourself while in a cage. No, we're not talking about that subservant. Not today, <laughs> not on here ever. <laughs> it's against my philosophy on chastity. Don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I will, uh, if you want a session doing that, it's fine, but if you were one of my subs, it wouldn't be happening. Um, the closed cage thing, yeah, so closed cages is a good point. So even something like this, you will find quite hard to clean. So an open style cage like a Cobra or Cherry Keeper might be better if you want to keep it on 24-7 because although this does have spaces in it, it can be quite hard to get cleaned unless you're taking it off. So something to keep in mind. If you are fully taking it off, you won't really have any issues. But yeah, sometimes the metal can be a little bit easier to keep clean of. DT. P was asking about cage sizes again. Um, if your erection is causing discomfort, I would possibly look at whether you've got too big of a cage on or whether it's fitting you properly because it shouldn't really be sore at any point when wearing it. So something that I did forget to mention was the different kinds of chastity locks that you get, the ways that you can keep your keys safe. So um, remote key holding, you have something like lock ink where you can use a cellmate or a key pod to, by Bluetooth control, give access to another person anywhere in the world. You can also use timed lock boxes, combination lock boxes, pad locks, you get um, time pad locks, you get numbered zip locks. So they're probably the main way, just depending whether you have an internal lock or an external lock. Nick's just saying about make sure your cage is small again. And then retweet and like sub was asking um, whether to go for the smaller or larger ring size if you're between sizes and then the materials of the cage and the pros and cons. So I think I've kind of covered this already. Basically it's up to your own comfort. I would normally say try and go for as small a ring as you can just to keep the cage against your body but obviously you'll know best what fits you. I think is pretty much all I can say. I'm pretty much leaving this on you at this point. Um, and for the materials, we'll just cover it again. Silicone, I think is very good for kind of quick play sessions, wearing it more for like a role play or a quick little experiment into chassis. I don't think it's suitable for long-term wear. I just, you get too much sensation through it. It's too light. It's a bit difficult to clean. It's not the best. So then for me, plastic and metal are kind of, even, I wouldn't say one's really better than the other, they're just different. So with metal, you get a lot more styles of cages. You tend to get more open styles where you could have like a spiral design or something that's very, very easy to keep clean for a long term where metal is also not gonna get 
smelly or end up getting stained or anything, although you will have to keep an eye out for rust depending on the quality of the cage. With plastic, you can also get a lot of different designs, whether you want a closed in one, whether you want an open one, 3D printing is becoming very, very popular now. So yeah, I would say that for plastic cages, the main benefit is how many different sizes you can get. So without getting a custom metal cage, most of them are just kind of like a standard size where with a plastic cage, you do tend to get ones that are more kind of 3D printed or molded to fit your body. And yeah, I think that's really all I can say. Oh, and someone asked me this on TikTok one day. There's a hole in it so you can pee, don't worry. Don't worry, we're not going to stop you going to the toilet for a month. That would just be very, very bad. I don't want you to go to hospital. And with that, hopefully I've got to the end of the video in one piece and you haven't had too many jump scares, if any. Let's hope that I didn't have to put too many in and I managed to get everything in one video because I've tried to film this so many times and I kept messing up. So I'm in my latex today. You're getting a video. Might even film another video after this. We will find out at some point. If you enjoyed this video, please follow me, like, comment, all that stuff. I am Lara Sky, and yeah.